Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Hey everyone, welcome to Sports Spectrum and the Sports Spectrum podcast. Excited to bring you a conversation today because it is Super Bowl week and we got a ton of interviews and different people that we're going to talk to. But every year for the last three years since I've been a part of Sports Spectrum, we have talked to the team chaplains of the NFL representatives in the Super Bowl. This year, the 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Today, we bring to you our conversation with Kansas City Chiefs team chaplain, Marcellus Casey. I think you're going to like hearing about what faith looks like within the locker room of the KC Chiefs, the study that they've been going through this year, the different studies, I should say, and what their real focus was from a chaplaincy in the playoffs. Marcellus Casey shares with us about that, what his role entails as the Chiefs team chaplain, and just how awesome of a fan base they have there in Kansas City. I saw it firsthand seeing the Chiefs and Titans play earlier this year and just blown away by Kansas City and that faithful in Chiefs land. So you're going to love this conversation. Kansas City Chiefs team chaplain Marcellus Casey joins us here on Sports Spectrum. Let's take a listen to that conversation. Marcellus, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, this is a exciting time, we'll just say. Your your Chiefs are in the Super Bowl for the first time in 50 years. What was that moment like for you, just watching Kansas City not only beat the Titans, but now advance to Super Bowl 54? Man, it's, it's crazy. Um, it's such a huge gift to our city. Um, man, one of my good buddies and I, we both do uh, ministry w- with uh, inner city um, youth. And um, my buddy, he grew up in one of the worst parts of Kansas City. And he talked about in the 90s when he was a kid, you know, living motel to motel and, and having his clothes in trash bags. He talked about waking up on a Monday morning and he talked about his whole week being different when the Chiefs would win. And as a little kid in the 90s, now he's a grown man here in 2020, impacting inner city youth. So now for these youth to like see their team going to the Super Bowl is a massive gift and um, gives a lot of hope to our city. So we're really excited about it. Yeah, I know you've been in that city a long time. And listen, just from a sports perspective, Chiefs fans are the best. I mean, my wife and I, we went to Tennessee to see. She's a Titans fan, and yes, she's sad, but she'll she'll be okay. But we, she's a Titans fan, and we took her, and we saw the Titans beat the Chiefs. It's actually their mm-hmm. last loss um, in Nashville in November. And I got to tell you, about 60% of the fans in Nashville, Marcellus, were wearing red. And so they yeah. travel well. There's something unique and special about those Kansas City fans, isn't there? Yeah, folks are sold out. I mean... Um, on, on days when we, uh, when we have noon games, I want to say that the gates open, um, around six thirty or 7 AM. And there've been times that I've driven past around 5 AM and there are cars and trucks and RVs lined up, ready to get in and folks tailgate. And we share a parking lot with Kauffman stadium, um, which is where the Royals play. And I mean, it takes up the whole Arrowhead parking lot and Kauffman's parking lot. And wow. it's just, it's packed wall to wall. Yeah. Every time I, and I've been to a lot, fortunate to have been to a lot of stadiums and a lot of games. And every time I, I tell somebody that they'll say, well, have you been to Kansas city for a game? And I say, no, and they're like, that's <laughs> the place you got to go because it's like a college atmosphere. And there's something special obviously happening this year with the chiefs. Now, what was really cool for me, just as a believer watching the chiefs, they win the AFC and they get the Lamar hunt trophy. And there's his son, Clark Hunt, up on that pedestal on that platform, accepting that trophy talking on CBS and giving praise to God. And I just thought that was such a unique thing and a really cool thing, giving glory to God first things first. And certainly his leadership has to have been a a great impact on creating a culture within the Chiefs. What has that helped for you to see a culture like that, to be able to be in your role as a person who's spiritually encouraging players, coaches, I would imagine, all sorts of different staff members, in helping you do your job, I guess, as a chaplain in the way that you do it. Yeah, well, um, 
Yeah, I'll never forget the first time when I was a little kid meeting Lamar Hunt. My dad um, used to do chapel for the Chiefs. Um, his name's Kerry Casey, okay. and uh, he's the CEO at Championship Fathering. And I remember as a little kindergartner meeting Lamar Hunt in the parking lot and just how cordial and kind and, and loving he was um, with my father and I. And you just see that legacy throughout the whole family with um, Clark and his wife, Tavia, and all of Clark's siblings. They just it's really a family um, environment. It's really um, a faith filled environment at the stadium and with their family. So it, it makes it really easy as a chaplain to uh, to have a positive impact um, with the with the players and with the coaches. Marcellus Casey's our guest here on Sports Spectrum. Tell me uh, about or tell us about what your role entails. We've talked to many chaplains from many sports teams and a lot of NFL chaplains, and the roles sort of vary. A lot of them are similar, but they're a little different too. What does that look like for a season like the 2019 into 2020 season, your role as the chaplain? What does that entail, Marcellus? Yeah. So, um, for one, I mean, being a chaplain is, is unbelievable. I love it. Um, I've been a chaplain ever since my junior year of college, I actually at Northwest Missouri state, I quit the football team my junior year and became our team chaplain. Mm. And then, um, for six years, I was the chaplain for football, basketball, baseball, and wrestling at university of Illinois and, um, working with coach Zook with the football team and, and Bruce Weber with the basketball team there was amazing. And, and now to be able to do this for three seasons with the chiefs, um, has been unbelievable. So being able to work at different levels, whether it be division two NCAA division one NCAA, or now with professional athletes, man, it, it's my role really entails working with human beings. I mean, these, these guys have feelings, they have families, um, they, they have passion for the game. They have, um, past, you know, hurts and, and wounds that they've, that they've sustained, um, and, and, and joy, you know, they're, they're human beings just like anybody else. So, Really, I just try to meet them where they are. You know, um, if they have an injury, I want to be there to minister to them. Um, on a on a more consistent basis, we do Bible study um, weekly, mm. and uh, we do one for the coaches and one for the players, and then um, and then uh, every week we do a chapel before the game. So we do that on on Saturday evening. Um, before the game. And then my wife um, plays a major role as well. So she does a weekly Bible study um, for any of the wives and, and girlfriends that want to come. And she um, does a really good job teaching them the word of God and also spending time with them um, on a personal basis. That's so vital, isn't it? And I mean, the wives part, because they live a very difficult and sometimes lonely life because their husbands or their boyfriends are, are gone locked in full loaded into an NFL season and they're at home tending the kids and just kind of, you know, in many ways, uh, left alone and not saying that the husbands are doing that, but they have a job to do. And that's vital, isn't it? To kind of pour into the wives just as much. Yeah, it really is. And I would say, um, you know, the, the women of the chiefs organization are, are really, um, um, strong part of, of the team. I think you just sense that like, um, with the, with the wives and girlfriends that we interact with, like they're, they're just so bought in. And yeah. I think that's because of the culture that the chiefs create for families. And, and it's such a great support system that I think, um, it's easy for the whole family to be really bought into what, what's going on with the team. You mentioned the Bible studies, uh, weekly studies that you do with the team and the coaches. Can you share what the Bible study was this year or what you guys walked through and went through for, for a study? Yeah, so with the Bible study, um, I, I'll do something different every few weeks. There's times that we even sync up with the church calendar. So, you know, we do something special for Advent. Then there's times that I'm doing things that are topical or, or expositional, just like walking through God's word. I really, um, personally have a conviction to like really make sure that we're walking through God's word and looking at what scripture says, even if, if we are working on certain topics. So that's what we do for Bible study. And 
with our pregame chapels, we've had a, a really uh, defined focus. We talked about prayer this whole year. So we've actually um, walked through the Lord's Prayer really slowly. So we've taken short bits of it, um, um, stanzas and even parts of the stanzas of, of each line of, uh, of the Lord's Prayer. And really just taught on how Jesus taught us to pray and how he taught us to connect with God the Father and and take all of our needs to him. And we're forgiven of our sins and um, we're kept from evil. We're provided for consistently. So um, we went through the Lord's Prayer through the regular season. And then um, here in the playoffs, we've had a focus of putting that into action. So um, during our chapel times uh, here for the playoffs, we've just we've focused on praying together. So I've I've had a focus of praying over the guys um, instead of me preaching a message or talking about prayer. We've just been praying um, and seeking God's face. Yeah, there's real power. There was real power in prayer, isn't there? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, that's wonderful to hear. Now, not naming names, and we don't ever want to do that. We've talked to many chaplains and. We got to be careful with that, and that's private, obviously. But can you share a story, maybe, where you saw God do a work in a player's life this year, or maybe even in the last few years? And again, don't name names to to protect that that player. But is there a story you can share? Just seeing someone really grow and kind of just the spirit hits them, and they and they get it. You know, they start growing in that relationship with the Lord. Yeah, um, I appreciate you saying that because I won't name names, but I will say that. Man, we're seeing a lot of a lot of growth um, with players that I interact with, and we have um, man real leaders. So as you think about leaders on the team, um, a lot of those guys are, are in the chapel. Yeah, and and then on a one on one basis, uh, man, when I see the spirit hit a guy or or just start moving is when. You know, I'm getting text messages are saying, hey, can you sit down and teach me more of God's word? So those one on one sessions where um, I get to show up and it's just me, me and, and one of the players or me and one of the coaches. And we're just we're walking through God's word, seeing what eternal truths God has placed in there hmm. um, that tell his story of how he um, is alive, how he has revealed himself to the world and how uh, we find life in that and that the that Jesus truly is the center of the whole story and um, we get to find life um, in him that that's for me that's happening um, a lot and I really enjoy that aspect of it that's awesome a couple more questions here with Marcellus Casey on sports spectrum how important is it this is more of a generic question for you I guess but how important is it in your mind for players athletes who have a very large platform, whether they're a starter or not, they're an NFL player. So there's a platform that comes with that. How important is it for players to use their platform to point people, you know, back to God? We're talking about believers here, guys that profess a faith in Christ. How important is it for those players in your mind to be open about their faith and and share that with others? Yeah, I think, um, Man, I think it's huge. I mean, even even as you look at Coach McCartney in Colorado and yeah. how, you know, all of Promise Keepers was gathered around him intensely using his platform um, for the glory of God. And but I think it's it's um, I think that every human being has been given a platform um, to share the gospel, to let that let the power of the gospel be known and heard and come off of their lips um, but it, even as you look at Coach McCartney, like there's a lot of sweat equity and a lot of energy and effort that he put behind uh, the movement and what God was using him to do. So, I, and I think that that's true for every believer. So, I think I think the platform has its place, but it's not everything. I think that every single believer in the world, um, and, and there's often times even with the players where I'm telling them stories of missionaries and um, pastors from across the world that are being persecuted for sharing their faith and that are that um, their lives are being um, severely altered uh, because they are living for the kingdom. So I want our guys to have a wide perspective of what God's doing and, and actually not get so focused on, well, you know, you have this platform, you could mention um, God on TV. And, yeah. and, and I think that that is huge. I, I think, man, you see Dabo Sweeney, you see, uh, Trevor Lawrence doing that. That's huge. 
and awesome. And at the same time, man, I want to, if, if there's any Christian believer listening to this right now, like go back to your office and share the gospel, go to your neighbor and ring the doorbell, taking some cookies and share the gospel. Um, because we all have a platform and every, everybody really needs to be sharing their faith. Yeah, that's really good. Marcellus, uh, last couple of questions here. You talked to me off the air about some of the other work that you're doing, not just with the Chiefs. You said that you're the CEO of the Hope Center. You're also um, working in leadership with Redeemer Fellowship Church in Kansas City. Can you share a little bit about some of the other roles that you have, not just being the chaplain with the Chiefs, but some of the other things that you're working on in Kansas City? Yeah, I, so I'm the COO with um, the Hope Center, and we are a uh, a nonprofit here in Kansas City. And so basically, what we do is we develop leaders um, among the youth of our city. Uh, so we actually have after school programs um, for kindergarten through fifth grade, and then we run um, leadership programs for middle schoolers and high schoolers um, here in Kansas City, and. Um, we're in, we're in one of the rougher neighborhoods of Kansas city and, and pour our lives out to see, um, the youth have hope. Um, we really want them to flourish, um, even though they might be living in a vulnerable environment. Um, so we pour into them and we pour into their families. Um, we, we really engage with the mothers and fathers, um, that are, that are fighting to keep their families together and, and have a healthy, have a healthy place for their, for their kids to grow. So, that's what we do um, at the Hope Center. Um, and then uh, with Redeemer Fellowship, I'm a lay elder, um, meaning I'm a, I'm a volunteer pastor, although I am, you know, ordained um, with the rest of our, our pastors. And I give my time there to um, develop community. Um, I help oversee some of our small groups and uh, just and help provide leadership um, with the rest of our pastors there at Redeemer Fellowship. I love it. Um, you know, I like asking questions to people who pour into others, um, who pours into you because you're a chaplain. So you, f- I feel like you can go into pour to all these players and all these coaches and all these different people and the tank can get empty and you got to stay fed too. So who pours into you? Yeah, that's easy. Um, uh, my dad and my mom, yeah. um, you know, the empathy that I have for the players and coaches, um, comes from my mom. She's, she's a lifelong educator, school teacher, um, and just loves kids. She, to this day, she leads after school programs in the inner city in Chicago at Lawndale Community Church. And uh, she just, she has a, a lot of empathy and, uh, and I get that from her. And then my dad, you know, he was the, he was the chaplain for the Dallas Cowboys under Tom Landry. He mm-hmm. was uh, a chaplain in the 88 Olympics in Seoul, Korea. He was a chaplain for the Kansas City Chiefs for a number of years. And he's he's pastoring now at uh, at Lawndale Community Church in Chicago. And and so anytime I get time with my parents and and um, just encouragement and love and and good meals and, and, you know, they truly minister to my heart and and love me. So um, I I think the the connection between a father and son um, is huge. And, and my dad is the CEO at championship fathering, um, really gets that and understands that. And he and my mom both lead in that organization, um, so that a lot of people can have relationships like, uh, my father and I have. That's great stuff there. Last question, Marcellus, and we asked this to all of our guests. So I'm really fascinated to see what your answer is. What are you learning from God today? What is he teaching you where you are right now in your life, what's the lesson that God's been impressing on your heart lately? Yeah, I think the biggest thing um, that God is teaching me this year is character. Mm. And um, he's just been showing me that there are, um, even, even as a believer, there are still tougher and deeper wilderness experiences that God will gift to us to build our character and to build a deeper core inside of ourselves. And so there's no amount of gifting or talent, um, even in ministry that will carry you more than the character that, um, Jesus is really committed to forming inside of every believer. So that's, that's what I'm walking with Jesus with every single day. Good stuff there. He is Marcellus Casey from the Kansas City Chiefs as their team chaplain. Super Bowl 54 coming up this weekend. It's the Chiefs and the 49ers. It should be a lot of fun down there in Miami. 
Marcellus, thanks so much for joining us here. And, uh, you know, go Chiefs, I guess, right? I can't say go 49ers if I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good, man. The, there's a really good uh, friendship and fellowship among the chaplains. Uh, my best friend is the chaplain for the Rams, Kevin Nickerson. And yeah, so yep. we all love each other. We cheer each other on. We pray for each other. And uh, so go Chiefs, go 49ers. <laughs> Let God's will be done. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here. All right. That was fun talking to Marcellus Casey, the Kansas City Chiefs team chaplain. Who are you rooting for? Who are you predicting is going to win the game? We'd love to hear from you guys. Chiefs 49ers Super Bowl 54. You can reach out to us. You can email me, jason at sportspectrum.com, or just tag me on social media and let me know who you think is going to win the big game, Chiefs or 49ers. I don't know if I'm going to make my prediction yet. Maybe I'll make it. Uh, in a couple days on one of the other podcasts, but I'm still thinking it over because it's going to be a really good game, I think. I think both teams are equally matched. I think Kansas City's offense is ridiculous, but I think that the the 49ers' defense is really, really good, and they got a great running game. And, you know, Kansas City, uh, their defense has played well enough, too. I mean, to stop Derrick Henry, who was red hot in that championship game, was a really amazing accomplishment so this should be a really great game super bowl 54 chiefs and 49ers again thanks to marcellus casey kansas city chiefs team chaplain for joining us here on sports spectrum tomorrow we will bring to you the 49ers side of things and what that looks like what faith looks like in the locker room for the san francisco 49ers with their team chaplain reverend earl smith And this is the Sports Spectrum Podcast. We appreciate you all for listening, and we'll see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum. Have a great rest of your day.